welcome back for another video. Throughout pre-season, there's been a lot of comments about a Salah and Haaland team. We've looked at a Haaland only team, we've looked at a Salah only team. So what about both? It's become a really hot topic, especially after Haaland's pre-season form, most recently putting a hat-trick against Chelsea, who of course he faces game at one. I recommend watching this one all the way through to the end, as there's several price points covered, and we'll discuss some alternative picks that you might prefer. So what are the pros and cons of having both of the big hitters? The obvious benefit is you've got the peace of mind of having the best captain every week, and if either of them disappoint, it's easy to go down to a cheaper player, as opposed to if you start without one of them, then you try and work your way back up. For example, you can go Salah to Saka, Palmer, Sun, etc, which is one transfer. Meanwhile, moving from either of them up to Salah needs 2 mil or even 2.5 mil from somewhere, and you're not going to have that in the bank from Gemic 1, so that's 2 moves minimum. I do think this draft's got potential to get out of the gates a bit slower Gemic 1, but make the ground up immediately from Gemic 2. I'd love to know where you're all at right now, Salah, Haaland, both, or even neither. Drop a comment below. And don't forget to take advantage of Scout's 40% discount they're currently running. Link in the description for absolutely everything you need this season. So let's start off with the goalkeeper spot and it's Flecken. There's not much between the 4.5mm keepers, so go up your preference here. There's Flecken, Ariola, Henderson, etc. Brentford are a pretty defensively sound team, and they're a bit unlucky with injuries last season. 58.7 expected goals conceded ranked 8th. If you watched the video looking at former FPL champions Gemic 1 teams, Simon March mentioned that picking keepers from teams that tend to force opponents to shoot from outside the box has always fared well for him. Fun fact, last season, Brentford conceded 215 shots outside the box, which represented 39% of their total shots. Only Arsenal had a high percentage of shots from outside the box of 41%. So in a nutshell, lots of low XG shots is great for keepers with more potential for save points and less likely to concede. He was the top scorer in 4.5 mil keeper last season as well. The defence is Vardy, Old Trent and Hall. Despite the two premiums, I've managed to still go big at the back with two premium defenders. So hear me out with the Hall pick. The first thing I'd like to point out is Newcastle being linked with Gwehi and apparently currently negotiating for him. If this one gets over the line, he'll be a brilliant pick for 4.5 mil, nailed for Newcastle. And he'll subsequently weaken Palace's defence you'd imagine. Failing that, another possible transfer that could have a huge impact is if Trippier leaves. Livramento suddenly becomes the best 4.5 more defender in my eyes. For argument's sake, ignoring both those possibilities, I think there's a chance Hall's going to have a big season. He's been immense in pre-season, one goal, one assist. He inverts into midfield, which is actually how his goal came about. He received the ball in the middle of the pitch, on the edge of the box, and he buried a long shot. We know how much they struggled last season because of all the injuries, lining up with the likes of Lascelles and Kraft and centre-back at times. It's a different story now, and there's a ton of value in their defence, I expect. Good news, Trent owners. He's back with the squad and he's training now. Liverpool have got two final pre-season friendlies before Gamic 1. Bradley has impressed in Trent's absence, and there's perhaps a very small chance that he plays Gamic 1. Managers tend to line up with their best 11 in the final pre-season friendly, so I'd like to see Trent get good minutes across the last two games, to put it beyond doubt. It's not impossible that Slot lines up with both of them with Trent in midfield either. The final pre-season update video is going to come next week, so make sure you subscribe for complete coverage of all 20 teams. I really like Vardy for City's opening four fixtures. He's by far their most attacking defender, and he's the most nailed, but certainly not completely nailed. I mean, no one's really nailed at City bar Rodri and Haaland. If I had to pick one of Trent and Vardy for Gemic 1, it'd be Trent personally. We'll have a look at the midfield now, which is where some sacrifices have been made to afford Salah and Haaland. However, you could move Vardy down to a 4.5 ball defender, which is an option, and then chuck that 1.5 mil into midfield. The midfield is in Kunku, Salah, Eze and hudson Adoy. I mentioned at the start of the video that this team could have an average Gemic 1 and really get going from Gemic 2, because we've got Nkunku who plays against Vardio and we've got Eze who plays Flecken. It's something that I tend to avoid whenever possible, because returns from one of these midfielders means no clean sheet from the other in a nutshell. Nkunku hits that 6.5 mil price point where there's an absolute ton of picks, or you might have someone else that you prefer more. There's Gibbs White, Bailey, Johnson, or even Smith Rowe just scored in his Fulham debut off the bench yesterday. Nkunku is someone I'm keen to have in my final Gemic 1 team. It looks like a bad fixture on paper Gemic 1, but he does strike me the sort of player that can return against anyone, and he has been their stand-up player in their preseason games so far. So no captaincy headaches with both the premiums. Or maybe headaches in terms of picking which one some weeks, but there's no headaches in the sense of not owning who you think's the best captain each week. You get a run of captaincy which is Ipswich Gemic 1, Ipswich again Gemic 2, Man United or West Ham Gemic 3, Forest or Brentford Gemic 4, and then it's Bournemouth Wolves and then Fulham. Liverpool have looked really sharp in pre-season despite lots of players having not returned yet, or just returning now anyway. It's lined up nicely with a new manager and some easy fixtures to start the season. I don't see them struggling much in the opening game weeks. 
So 14.7 expected goal involvement for Eze last season, which doesn't sound like much. They only started 24 games because of injury. Minutes per expected goal involvement is a great metric because it focuses only on how often they were expected to return rather than their toes over the whole season. And this is where Eze leaps out, with an expected involvement every 140 minutes. So that's better than the likes of Son, Watkins, Johnson, Bailey, Foden and Erdegaard. He's on set pieces, including direct free kicks most likely, now elise has gone, and on penalties as well. I think it's fair to ask, how will Palace suffer, if at all, now Elise's left? Plus Mateta looking likely to miss the start of the season while he's at the Olympics. They've made a few signings, and they have Eduard who can fill in up top for Mateta the opening week or two, so I think he's worth taking a chance on still. Players that are on set pieces and penalties are sort of a cheat code. There's an invisible buff there, but they're always a bit likely to get you something. Eze could have an absolutely shocking game, and then someone wins a penalty. Suddenly, despite the bad game, you're on for 7 points minimum if he scores it, or even up to 10 points after bonus. hudson Adoy completes the midfield. I mentioned smith Rowe earlier, who did score off the bench on his Fulham debut against Sevilla. Andreas could be a good pick as well now, it just depends on where he lines up or if he drops deeper in the team. He's probably on set pieces still, and penalties. We have got a 4.5 mil midfielder on the bench. The other approach you could take is go for two 5 mil midfielders like Rogers and Bob. They obviously neither are completely nailed. Certainly not Bob. It does give you better depth on the bench though. Hudson Adoy does feel a bit more nailed than the Langer to me. Great opening fixtures for Forrest. And it's just a question of whether he can sustain his numbers. He scored 8 times last season for 2.65 expected goals. One glaring hole in the midfield is no Arsenal attack. There's absolutely no way of squeezing Sakram if you've got Haaland and Salah. There is the option to go Vardil to a 4.5 more defender and then Eze to Werdegaard, but I prefer this combination personally. Onto the front three, which is Haaland, Isaac, and Munez. So Munez first. I think it's really going under the radar, 6.8% owned. Man United game week one, not necessarily a bad feature at all. They seem to have given up on the Agate signing and are still in the market for a defensive mid. It's one area that Man United is sorely missing improvement in still. It's safe to say Casemiro's best years are well behind him. And then beyond that, he's got Leicester home, Ipswich away, West Ham home. So he's worth the extra 0.5 mil over an Armstrong or a Jao Pedro in my eyes. So you're probably Captain Haaland in game week 2, 3 and 4 and then back to Salah when City face Arsenal. What I will say about the Salah and Haaland drafts is you're betting big on them delivering as captain. Whereas when you go for one or the other, suddenly you can afford the likes of Saka, Watkins and Son, who've got every chance of making up lost points if you get unlucky with captaincy. Everyone's very confident on City battering Ipswich game week 2, but nothing's a given in football. He could go off injured after 20 minutes, or he could blank with 5 missed big chances. And the question is, will Nkunku, hudson Adoy, and Eze make up the shortfall? One non-negotiable for me is Isaac, who in honesty is a very sound game week 1 captain home to Southampton, which perhaps lends some weight to Haaland only drafts. You got Isaac captain 1, and then you hand over to Haaland after that. 98.4 minutes per expected goal involvement last season as the table earlier showed, which only Haaland and Salah could be, and they're significantly more expensive. I'm very surprised Isaac didn't come in at the same price as Watkins, and it's not surprising that he's the most owned player. Outside of that, they've priced nearly everyone perfectly. Onto the bench, which is Valdemarsen, Concert, Winks and Greaves. I picked Concert for two reasons. First of all, he rotates perfectly with Hall. And secondly, he is good insurance if Hall isn't nailed. I'd be comfortable enough playing him every week from game week 2 to game week 9. And of course, if Newcastle sign Kawahi or if Trippier leaves, then you've got two nailed 4.5 picks in Newcastle either way. So that's the team. Let me know what you think. I read every comment, so drop one below. If I call Tattoo at 200,000 subscribers, get involved. See you soon for the next one.